All right, Jody Prepper here, bringing you the news that'll help you prepare. So first of all, we're going to Israel. They are arming more of its citizens. Obviously, since the Hamas attack, there was record numbers of people applying for gun licenses. Obviously, a license is permission. So you're asking them for permission to defend yourself. Uh, but obviously the government is taking more of a proactive role, basically encouraging its citizens to to apply for a license. I'm assuming uh, as long as you meet the criteria, probably based on fitness, m mental health, probably. So as long as you meet the criteria, they seem to be encouraging it at the minute, but... How quickly are they going to ask for them back once this crisis is over? From a few days ago, but basically you, this sort of thing here where Italy is officially pulling out of China's Belt and Road Initiative. This sort of like agreement, pact, uh, contracts. Now this one made the news... I think probably because Italy was the only country in the Western nation that was actually part of this agreement. Usually when we're heading into some sort of conflict, you'll find that lots of agreements, contracts, you know, tr trade basically just falls apart. Uh, you know, long-standing agreements will just just falter, disappear very quickly. Now, this is something that you need to think about in your own preparedness, like regards to a preparedness group, making sure that your your goals and, you know, your, your personal attributes all mesh. But obviously have things agreed upon, you know, what happens when, you know, if there is some internal conflict in your group, what happens? What happens to the group? What sort of body or group of people are going to be set up to to mediate it? So, you know, I mean, we're talking about, like, this is agreements between countries. But you, you're going to have to think about this and scale it back to within your own group. Uh, because, you know, conflict does happen. Even in if you've known people for years and years, you know, you've had your prep group during the best of times, you know, if you actually have to use your prep group in a sort of situation that you created it to help get you all through, you know, that's an entirely different scenario. And it's really going to test your your relationships. Now, throughout all sorts of financial crises, um, upturns, downturns, you hear about these groups, uh, basically just in supposedly independent financial like analysis companies. There's a few of them about, but one of them is called Moody. And, you know, I mean, who are these people? You know, for one thing, it says, uh, you know, I think a lot of them are just like political entities because they seem to adjust people's uh, financial and credit ratings on a country scale, you know, when it suits them. It doesn't seem to be tied to any sort of like actual, you know, financial situation that is actually happening. It just seems to be like political or if there's some sort of physical, you know, conflict going on. If there's some sort of physical like conflict, they just seem to downgrade people's <laughs> financial uh, outlook, you know, just to spite them or to affect them financially. Uh, because, you know, for, for some reason, people do take notice of what these sorts of companies say, uh, you know, whether that's artificial. I mean, my opinion is that these sorts of companies uh, are basically linked to the central bankers so obviously you know any sort of country which is regarded as outside of their scope 
you know, they could just downgrade their competition's financial outlook just to spite them. So, but anyways, I mean, this does have an effect on, you know, financial markets, etc. So, you know, obviously, if you're one of these people that does yeah, take note and is invested in the financial sector, then this sort of thing obviously can affect your portfolio, depending on how significant that portfolio is. We're going to the time one straight now. And this is from today. And they're saying that two suspected Chinese weather balloons flew across the sensitive Taiwan Strait on Sunday, but stayed well to the north of Taiwan. I mean, whether these were actually weather balloons or not is uh, up to debate. Could be could be spy balloons. We know that China do use balloons for uh, intel gathering. I don't know how well they're actually able to navigate these things, but you know they wouldn't have to actually fly over the country to to gain reasonable intelligence. I would I would think. Were they actually weather balloons? Who knows? But I mean, this area is obviously highly focused on right now on the world stage. So they're saying here that the balloons flew 27,000 feet. Initial judgment is that there were weather balloons. They might just be a bit skitzy seeing a balloon, you know, and then... Uh, assuming that it might be spying but it actually does obviously have a less nefarious use you know they obviously i mean i'm sure china does use hundreds of weather balloons uh so could have been could have been just genuine and um, we're going to ireland now and obviously in November, there was the riots because an immigrant attacked some school children and a teacher at a school. The Irish, very rightly so, were very angry at this. And obviously, they were venting their frustration and anger about the immigration stairs. In County Galloway, in the west of Ireland, there was a hotel that was earmarked to be used to house up to 70 asylum seekers. But the hotel basically burned down before the asylum seekers were sent there. So, you know, the police are announcing that the cause of the fire would be determined, but it appears that the outbreak could have been a result of a crime, basically arson. The hotel was going to be used for refugees, People heard about it, they obviously organised and took the hotel out basically to stop them being housed there. So politicians really can't be surprised for backlash from indigenous populations of countries where, you know, you've got people and immigrants without any sort of checks done on them, just being brought in through open borders. You wouldn't just take anybody off the street and bring them into your house, you know, uh, especially if you have, like, family. You would vet people, you know, you would get to know them, you would, you would minimise the risk before you brought them into your home. But the people who are in control of our borders are basically just letting people across. And unfortunately, people are getting hurt, people are dying, and... A reaction from the indigenous population has to be expected. So you know, I mean, it's a, it, it's a bad thing, but the people who are protesting they did not cause the situation. It can't be a surprise that people who care for their country react in in various ways. Um, we're going to Mark Zuckerberg's Hawaii compound. Um, I've seen a couple of people talking about this. And uh, I, I really don't think it is what 
people think it is. Put it like this, right? If you're a massive multi-billionaire, right? You're uh, Zuckerberg, you're uh, Bezos, uh, you, you know, one of these massive billionaires that owns like a big tech company or something, you know? If you're going to invest in some sort of bunker, complex, whatever you want to call it, right? Something that is going to help you ride out any sort of emergency, really. Like, I mean, we're not just talking like uh, Tia Twalky, but, you know, if I was like a, a, a multi-billionaire, I was living in America, for instance, I would obviously do like a risk assessment of my area, you know, what happens there? What's the potential for X, Y, Z to happen? I would obviously have a compound. Yeah, you know, I would have a plan to initially have protection from, you know, whatever was brought up from the risk assessment. But I would also have a location elsewhere where I could retreat to or, or travel to. Now, people are going on about this Hawaii compound, right? Secret bunker, tree houses. I mean, tree houses? Like, what the hell? Like, basically what I think this is, I think this is just... I think this is the compound with the flashing lights on. You know, this is... Everybody look over here. You know, uh, it's basically the bunker which gets the public attention, but it's not his actual bunker. His, his actual bunker is somewhere completely different. You know, this is just, this is just the public, uh, because I mean, prepping in the mainstream media uh, and in general is getting a lot of attention at the minute. So, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if they built this just to maintain that momentum, you know what I mean? Everybody look over here, you know, see what Zuckerberg's got. If something happens, you know, and people try to break into his compound, there'll be nothing there to help them. You know, there won't be anything in the bunker, obviously. Uh, you know, this isn't his actual retreat. You know, it, that's just my opinion, but uh, yeah, I mean, it... For one thing, if you've got the money to build a massive bunker complex, you've got the means to do it using, you know, people who are going to keep their mouth shut, who've built bunkers for government, you know, and other billionaires, you know, people that really know how to keep their mouth shut. You know, you're not just going to use like uh, Bob the Builder from down the road to build your bunker because he's he's going to let his lips uh, flap. No, you know, I mean, the people who build the bunkers for these guys do not talk. So the fact that this place is being talked about, you know, this isn't his actual, actual bunker that he's going to go to, you know, that's somewhere else. It's, uh, but I mean, it'd be, it'd be interesting to actually see the complex, you know, it probably has things which you would use in an actual bunker. It's just, I really don't think that this is an actual bunker. So, you know, I mean, obviously, this place has been broadcast. People have, you know, everybody knows about it now. But, you know, just think about when you're doing your own thing, your own preparedness, you know, just be really, really, really careful what information you disclose and who you disclose it to because that old world war ii saying you know loose limbs uh sink ships it 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 does apply you know you could just have your preps completely shattered you might have somebody who you trusted and you know you revealed a lot of information about your preps and then when something happens and uh you know, they betray that trust. So you got to be really, really careful, you know, uh, just keep your preps to yourself when something does happen and you get those preps out and, you know, it really helped you all in that situation, whatever it was, 
then obviously then people will be more grateful that you that you protected this investment by not even disclosing that it existed okay guys um so that was basically some news in brief and you know just some perspective and my own opinion on some of it but um stay tuned uh, for next video thanks for watching just uh you know be safe be prepared this has been uh jordy prepper take care